Sorry. I'd like to call the Gurney Village Board regular meeting of July 16th, 2018 to order. Roll call, please, Andy. Ross. Here. Garner. Here. Balmas. Present. Hood. Here. Thorstenson. Here. Jacobs. Here. Six present. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome. It's like everything's echoing in here tonight. Um, first up is public comment. I don't have any public here, so. Um, but I would like to say a huge, huge thank you uh, to Trustee Thorstenson um, and our Economic Development uh, Director, Ellen Dean, for the wildly successful East Grand Farmers and Artesian Market yesterday um, to see that many people uh, out there on a Sunday enjoying themselves from our community it was very heartwarming. I know uh, Ellen's team, Christian, Carrie, and Maritza did the lion's share of getting the word out and everything, but many of our staff were there early Sunday morning. It was fantastic. I, the great selection of vendors. It was a lot of fun. Um, saw a lot of people there, so um, I think you're on to something. So thank you, Trustee Thornton. You were very determined, and I know Ellen was your partner in crime there in uh, seeing that through and making sure that we followed through. Um, but I, the community, the buzz has been perfect. Um, lots of positive comments. Vendors all seemed happy that I talked to. So um, good job. Thank you. We got one down. <laughs> one, yes, one down. Um, so yeah, if anybody wasn't able to make it this past Sunday, Make sure you mark your calendars for August 19th, right? The next one? Correct. Okay, August 19th. All right, I will move on to approval of the consent agenda as presented. Do I have a motion to approve? So motion by Trustee Jacobs, second by Trustee Garner. Roll call, please. Ross. Aye. Garner. Aye. Balmas. Aye. Hood. Yes. Thorstenson. Yes. Jacobs. Aye. Six aye. All right, motion carries. Patrick, please read the consent agenda into the record. Item number one, approval of the minutes from the July 2nd, 2018 Village Board meeting. Item number two, approval of payroll for period ending July 6, 2018 in the amount of $839,118.51. Item number three, approval of bills for period ending July 16, 2018 in the amount of $2,112,051.48. Thank you, Patrick. Do I have a motion to approve the consent so, agenda as read into the record? Motion by Trustee Balmas, second by Trustee Ross. Roll call, please, Andy. Ross? Aye. Garner? Aye. Balmas? Aye. Hood? Yes. Thorstenson? Yes. Jacobs? Aye. Six aye. All right, move on to petitions and communications. The first is approval of a proclamation designating August 5th through 11th, 2018 as National Stop on Red Week in the Village of Gurney. The Village of Gurney is building broad community-based partnerships to increase awareness on the wide set, widespread problem of red light running. And in 1998, the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the American Trauma Society established National Stop on Red Week to set aside one week of every year to raise public awareness about this completely preventable and deadly form of aggressive driving. Red light running is the leading cause of urban crashes, according to the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety. In 2016, 719 people were killed and an estimated 126,000 were injured nationally in red light running crashes. And nearly two thirds of the deaths and injuries from red light running related crashes were people other than the red light runner, including bicyclists, pedestrians and occupants of other vehicles. And the financial cost to the public of all crashes exceeds 390 billion each year. And red light safety cameras reduce traffic fatalities by 24% according to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. And more than 37% of drivers admitted, admit to running a red light in the past 30 days despite the fact that 55% of the participants said in a, it is a very serious threat, and 92.8% acknowledged that running red lights is unacceptable. 
Now, therefore, I, Mayor Christina Kavarik, do proclaim that the week of August 5th through August 11th is hereby designated as 2018 National Stop on Red Week in the Village of Gurney. I urge everyone to reduce crashes, injuries, and the tragic loss of life by stopping for red lights. Motion to approve. I'll motion to approve. motion by Trustee Balmas, second. second by Trustee Thorstenson. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. Um, this may, Jack's not here, but this may be a good time to do a little um, public awareness on the success of our photo enforcement, some statistics, and yeah, if there's just a few sound bites that we can put out for the public on social media, remind them of why it's a good idea. All right, no other petitions and communications. Any reports, Patrick? No reports, uh, but we do have a committee of the whole scheduled for next Monday, and staff currently does not have anything for July. We've got some stuff lined up for August, um, but not for All right, next week. And so. I have nothing um, pending either, so do I have? So moved. <laughs> I have a motion by Trustee Balmas a and a second by Trustee that, Thorsonson yeah. to not hold the committee of the whole meeting um, next week. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, we will not have a committee of the whole meeting next week. I can just hear everybody's tears. Uh, and any old business? No. All right, then we will move on to new business. Approval of Ordinance 2018. 56. 56, adding Chapter 60 of the Gurney Municipal Code to provide for the regulation of an application for small wireless facilities. Yeah, Patrick. and actually Attorney Winter is going to walk us through this, so he's um, right. the, the main point of contact on this one. Yeah, All right, uh, Brian. Yes, uh, basically uh, technology continues to advance in the area of uh, wireless, and, it's use, and most of it is data use. Uh, the industry uh, throughout the country has been attempting to address uh, the placement of smaller antennas. These antennas are basically, if you look at the model or what's now the, would be the language in our ordinance, this, this ordinance tracks really model language that the Illinois Municipal League put together in response to a bill recently signed by the governor. And basically these antennas will go on utility poles, uh, light standards, um, for the most part, uh, uh, places where they could install within the public right away. There are limits. These antennas cannot exceed 10 feet above a pole or a maximum height of 45 feet. And uh, uh, the industry and the municipalities work together because, as you could imagine, uh, if there wasn't a uniform approach to this, the cost could vary widely from communities. And so uh, the state legislature did actively become involved and they passed the state statute. So many of the provisions that are now in front of you are actually directly from that state statute. There is a reoccurring fee um, and it, it talks about the location fee of $200 uh, per year per uh, location and that's a, a recurring rate. Um, municipalities cannot charge more than that amount. So basically this is going to be the new approach going forward for these smaller antennas where they can be placed in the right of way. The villages are entitled to have an application to indicate where they would be placed. Uh, we can collect an initial application fee and then a $200 annual fee. Um, there are some potential for um, restricting locations if, it, if it's a pole or a light standard that uh, for public safety we need, we can, tell, we can decline the application. Uh, otherwise, these applications, uh, I think the municipalities are anticipating uh, quite a few of them because it may be essentially first come, first serve. So that if there's needs, if there's a need for antennas in a certain area, the utilities will be interested in getting their application on file with the village, uh, because basically that's the the framework is, you know, we cannot uh, pick and choose who will be on that pole. We just have to apply the regulations as they're um, presented in the state statute and now in our local ordinance. 
So uh, they did impose a deadline of August 1st. <laughs> they gave 60 days, and a lot of municipalities already have applications. Uh, once this was passed, basically everyone was given a grace period to, uh, so that I know we have received some applications. Uh, we don't have to start processing them until August uh, 1st, but that's why we do need to have the model code uh, adopted within our village. So this is only on utility poles we own or any utility pole? well the applications you know uh, they they will apply but um, the the annual uh, amount those would be for our poles and our, our uh, where we own the structure do we own any municipal light poles mostly light poles okay and does it limit how many can be in an area or can they put there, them up there's some discussion about um, um, 100 feet. Um, there's also some discussion about uh, co-location, uh, but that's going to be administrative, uh, and and uh, building will have to look at those applications. At this point, we're not anticipating that there is some provisions for them to be able to install additional structures. But I, the thought is, I think the business model is utilizing the structures that are already in the right of way. Questions from trustees? I guess I do have one question. Trustee Thorstenson. So, thank you. It was going along your question, Mayor. So if we only have light poles, does this um, legislation apply to all um, government ent organizations? So the township, the library, the park district, everyone that has owned poles of some sort could be involved right but this is this is primarily going to focus on in the right of way uh, th that's where because that's where they have access mm -hmm. and so that's that's uh, where it's anticipated that these applications are going to come in now you know there's a lot of utility poles so for us where the reoccurring two hundred dollars would pr primarily be on uh, light standards but they could go to ComEd and put one on every yep. ComEd poll. Mm -hmm. Every ComEd poll in town? Uh, wow. There is some discussion about a distance of 100 feet, but they're, they're usually spaced at least 100 feet. So mm -hmm. um, my understanding is I know the Schaumburg community, um, uh, I attended a meeting where um, uh, they indicated they've had a lot of applications and the antennas continue to get smaller and more discreet um, that they're just literally um, a very modest small looking antenna that um, a lot of people will not notice which is a good thing this has nothing to do with fiber like the fiber underground this is completely separate type of service okay. right initially I think the industry was promoting this as 5G that they could roll out 5G, but this has the application for for the current technology, and so there may not be a direct link. Although these would certainly be used once they roll out 5G, which is going to enhance your service. It's going to even make it quicker. So this goes back to what you've said to me before: is because of data, they have to be closer together. So versus more cell phone towers, this would be in lieu of that so this isn't that and everybody wants faster service downloading everybody wants faster data on their laptops and iPads and so I think our residents would have to understand the trade-off is we use light poles other questions any objections um trustee Garner who would be installing these I mean is it is it large companies or is it yeah it's, it's primarily primary? going to be verizon okay. who, who do we have applications from sac wireless which is a consultant for several of the different carriers the three of the four that i've got in right yeah now. it's going to be cell cell uh, uh, installers that we require that they have a licensed electrician do all the electrical connections and then mounting you know we might make sure that the structural capacity is there on the towers so we'll evaluate each application on its merit and make sure that it's a safe installation and you know, let them go ahead then. 
Trustee this Jacobs. Is, this is light poles, utility poles, not traffic signals. It could potentially be a traffic signal. However, they're typically a little bit shorter and they have a lot of equipment on them. So I would not expect them to be on the traffic signal mask arms. They'll find a utility pole close by if they signal in that area. So we have 1,400 light poles, right? I don't know the number on top of And a lot of ours are shorter, not as attractive as the ComEd poles or the county poles or the state poles. I mean, ours are the smaller, more decorative poles in neighborhoods. You'll see them on Tri-State Business Park, the, the mast arm steel poles, and Almond Road, we have the, the taller poles, and then Grand Avenue. Oh, okay. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Motion by Trustee Jacobs. Second by Trustee Thorstenson. Roll call, please, Andy. Ross. Aye. Garner. Aye. Balmas. Aye. Hood. Yes. Thorstenson. Yes. Jacobs. Aye. Six aye. All right, motion carries. Item number two, approval of ordinance 2018-57, authorizing a battery and cartridge replacement agreement with Axon Enterprises. Patrick? Sure. So last year, the police department uh, introduced or implemented tasers um, within the department. They have batteries and cartridges um, that are a component of the tasers. Um, with a year gone by, we knew we would need to re-up and order some supplies uh, for the tasers. So we included $8,000 in this year's budget for battery and, and cartridge replacement, both duty and trading cartridges. Got a hold of taser as far as what our need was. And when we priced that out, it was over the $8,000. Uh, but we discovered that they have a uh, basically a subscription service, a replacement service. Um, so we talked to them about that, got a price on that. It's a five-year service that on an annual basis provides a set number of training cartridges and then unlimited duty cartridges and unlimited batteries. So it meets um, our needs. The total cost of the program over the five-year period is $39,680. So when you break that down, the annual cost is $79.36, which fits within the budget. Um, and as I said, it um, meets the department's needs. Uh, so the department's looking forward are looking to move forward with that program as the batteries and cartridges that are going to be an annual expense that's going to need to be budgeted and replaced. Questions for the trustees? Motion very... to approve. Second. Motion by Trustee Balmas, second by Trustee Garner. Roll call, please. Ross. Aye. Garner. Aye. Balmas. Aye. Hood. Yes. Thorstenson. Yes. Jacobs. Aye. Six aye. Motion carries. Very cost effective. All right, item number three, approval of engineering division's recommendation to award fire station number one and well house number one roof replacement project to the low bidder Waukegan Roofing Company at a cost of $148,424.92. Yeah, included in this year's budget were some roof replacements. So you have the fire station one and well house one and then village hall, which will be coming to the future board meeting. Uh, so Scott's been working um, with the respective departments, uh, fire and public works on this one, uh, sent out an RFP, received proposals back. Uh, we got submissions from six different uh, companies, ranging from Waukegan Roofing, the low bidder, up to $204,000. Um, within what we had uh, in the budget, uh, we've worked with Waukegan Roofing in the past, a solid company that's been around for a very long time, so they're recommending to move forward with Waukegan Roofing and get started on those projects. Wow, 104 years of experience. Waukegan Roofing that is very established. Questions? I have a motion to approve. Motion by Trustee Garner, second by Trustee Ross. Roll call, please, Andy. Ross. Aye. Garner. Aye. Balmas. Aye. Hood. Yes. Thorstenson. Yes. Jacobs. Aye. Six aye. All right, motion carries. Item number four, approval of engineering division's recommendation to award phase two of the East Grand Avenue landscape improvement project to the low bidder Copenhaver Construction Inc. at a cost of $63,535. Sure, so we talked about this last year, the landscape beautification program on East Grand that we're gonna break it into two phases. Uh, we got the first phase installed last year. Uh, it's doing really well, um, looks good out there. So. This year, uh, sent out requests for proposals for phase two of the project. Uh, just received two bids on this one. Uh, had some different alternatives as far as how we wanted to move forward with the project. Uh, 
Copenhagen was a little, little better on all three alternatives as we're looking to move forward with them. As we did last year, uh, we'll work with the Gurney Garden Center to purchase um, material from them. That price isn't going to be over $20,000. We expect it to be more around $15,000, so that doesn't uh, need to come before you, but we talked about that last year. Uh, so we'll follow that, that same approach again. <laughs> Um, and we've worked with Copenhagen in the past as well. So they will uh, prepare the landscape beds, install the material, mulch it, um, and then um, take care of it for the first year. Um, we'll have a contract for maintenance the second year, and then the third year is turned over to the businesses um, which the landscape is in front of. So for phase one, we're on the hook this year for maintenance, and then after this year, it'll be turned over uh, to them. So this will get everything done except for right down next to the railroad bridge at um, 132 and 41. So once that construction is done, we'll have a few properties to knock on down there, but this will this will take care of 95% of it. Questions from trustees? Make motion to approve. Second. Motion by trustee Balmas. Second by trustee Jacobs. Roll call, please. Ross. Aye. Garner. Aye. Balmas. Aye. Hood. Yes. Thorstenson. Yes. Jacobs. Aye. Six eight. Right, motion carries. It is amazing how big a difference flowers make. Something so simple, just until you put them in, you don't notice it. I, I know. I, I really? Just, Jeannie's been telling us that for years. I know. <laughs> Sometimes it's got to hit me in the forehead like a two by four. All right, item number five, approval of engineering division's recommendation to award the fiscal year 2019 tree and brush removal project to the low bidder landscape concepts management at a cost of $34,415. Engineering's been busy this past couple of weeks. Yeah, uh, well, you know, the road program's going really smooth, knock on wood. Um, so Scott's gotten got started a little earlier in the season on some of these other projects. That's so good. this is one of them, um, his annual drainage improvement projects. Um, a lot of them require um, brush and tree clearing. So again, went out to bid on this one, received four responses back. One of them, we believe, didn't understand what we were asking for, so that price was way out of whack compared to the others. Uh, but landscape uh, concepts management was a little bitter. That 34000 uh, included in your packet uh, the different areas um, of where tree and, and brush needs to be removed. Uh, so you had Chelsea Crossings, Dillian Cedar, Fuller Road at multiple locations, and then Waveland and University. So we'll get uh, the brush um, and trees removed and then some grading in there and improve the drainage in those areas. All right, necessary work. Questions from the trustees? So moved. Motion by Trustee right. Balmas, second by Trustee Jacobs. Roll call, please. Ross. Aye. Garner. Aye. Balmas. Aye. Hood. Yes. Thorstenson. Yes. Jacobs. Aye. Six aye. All right, motion carries. So last of our new business, I'll reopen the floor to the public. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay. Do I have a motion so to adjourn? Moved. Motion by Trustee Balmas, second. second by Trustee Jacobs. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. <laughs>